important tips about planning a trip driving into Mexico. And we've got Mark, our son, with us. He also has his own YouTube channel, and you might want to go over and check out the details that he teaches about traveling in Mexico. And we've asked Mark to explain how he goes about uh, creating his routes and his stops and his hotels when he's traveling from the United States across the border to different destinations. Okay, so my route isn't a secret. It's mainly I'm going to Huatulco, um, and I'll stop usually in Oaxaca or Puebla because <clears throat> I know people there, but I just stop like real quick. So if you Google the route, the fastest you're going to find is one that goes through Matamoros, through the Gulf, all the way down to Veracruz, and then starts heading west. That's a very dangerous route. First of all, there's no tolls on most of that route, so it's not a federal highway. It's not patrolled by the Mexican National Guard or federal police, whatever they want to call themselves now. And they put out a communication um, about a year ago saying that even they wouldn't patrol, like the regular police wouldn't patrol that route at night anymore. That they suggest people travel in caravans and stay together and only travel in the daylight just like the Old West. So I don't take that route. Plus, um, it's very rough on your car because it's not a maintained road. There's gonna be a lot of potholes. Um, there's gonna be, you know, no signs, no paint, not as many gas stations, uh, no emergency services. So I just take the tow road. I go straight into Laredo, go into Nuevo Laredo, and then I get on Highway 85. Um, if you put your starting point from Nuevo Laredo to, I don't know where you're going, but anywhere south of Mexico, it'll probably take you that route. Because what will happen is you'll go 85, and then right before you reach Monterey, for some reason it changes names to 85D. I don't know why. Like halfway, it's, it doesn't even, it just does. It's, it's a straight line, but halfway it just changes. So on this route, you're going to circumvent Monterey. You're going north of it, which is good because it avoids a lot of traffic. And then you're going to circumvent Saltillo. And you'll keep going and keep going. And usually I stop in Querétaro for the night. Um, with stops and everything, it takes me like 12 hours to get there from the border. So if you don't drive that much or... Maybe you'll have more stops because it's your first time and you'll be sightseeing or, or, or you make more restroom stops or meal stops, whatever. I usually just stop when I get gas. Like once the tank is empty in the car, I go to the restroom. I do it all at once. So I try to save time. Um, I never go past Querétaro because there's nothing until Puebla, which is five hours away. So that would be a total of 17 hours, which I don't feel like doing, especially at night. So, yeah, there's nothing between Querétaro and Puebla. Nothing. There may be some villages, I mean, but, like, you're not going to find a city with hotels or anything. So that's why I stopping point. After 12 hours, I stop there. If you can't do the 12 hours, you can go to San Luis Potosí. Um, that's nine hours from the border. So if you just want to drive nine hours plus one hour for stops or an hour and a half for stops, that's still a ten and a half hour drive. Um, both of those cities have really good hotels on the highway. I suggest using Expedia because you can use the map feature and you can just move around by the highway. You, you'll see where you're going to be and that'll give you an opportunity. Um, the one I stop in Querétaro is called Latit. It's literally on the highway exit. It's, it's a very nice hotel. Uh, it averages 50 to $55 a night. And you can get like two kings, kings for that, two king beds. It's a very nice hotel. Um, Lots of people are coming with their dog. Is that an option in the Expedia I, for I the saw hotels? a guy that stopped at that Latit. He just didn't say he had a dog. He just drove to it because it's built like an old hacienda. He just drove to the room and brought the dog in. But, you know, if 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 the dog does something, they're going to charge your card eventually. But, and 
you know, even if you use it speedy, they'll contact it speedy and letting you know you cause damages. So, I mean, it's really on you. Um, in San Luis Potosi, there's two hotels. The first one is Czar. It's actually pretty nice. Um, it's a little more rustic, but it's not a nice, it's a nice hotel. It's just old fashioned. And if you don't like it or you want something more modern, it has internet and everything. It's just the rooms are old fashioned. And these hotels don't have heaters. So it will get to like the high 30s in the winter time, overnight and in the morning in a frost. So if you want to bring, they'll give you blankets, but if you want to bring one of those little plug wall heaters that you can get at Walmart or something, that probably wouldn't be a bad idea if you're really not into the cold. I just put blanket on and when I wake up, I take a hot shower and I'm ready to go. But that Zara Hotel, if it's not your thing, half a block from it, there's a Marriott. So the Zara is like 40 bucks a night. The Marriott's like 80 or 90. So what's your pick? Um, the only thing is there's no restaurants right now open at night close to these places because everything closes at eight at night. So you're, if you're arriving in late, you might want to get some food at one of the big like highway stops. They have like big highway stops on this whole highway with like gas station, restaurant, whatever. You know, kind of like a pilot or a flying J, but it'd be like Mexican restaurant instead. And you can get something there and wrap it and take it with you to the hotel for the night. Um, they don't do wake up service, I don't know why. They say they will, but I have never gotten them to call me. So don't expect them to. My second day when I leave Carretero, I usually go all the way to Oaxaca. Um, it's five hours from Carretero to Puebla, then from Puebla to Oaxaca. Depending on your driving, if it's your first time, it'll probably be longer, probably five hours. It can be four to five hours, depending on how comfortable you are with uh, the traffic, because it's a really nice road all the way into Puebla. Once you leave Puebla, it's still a good road, but it changes, and basically there's two lanes, one coming and one going. So if you wanna overtake someone, you gotta go into the opposite traffic lane, which everyone does. But you know, there's cars coming, you gotta measure the distance on the highway, so if you're not used to driving like that, it gets iffy. And some people, they'll take their time and it'll take them a little longer. But if you get to Oaxaca, um, that's like a 10 hour drive from Querétaro, give or take. And you can spend the night there or you can, uh, yeah, basically. And from there, if you're going to Huatulco, which is where I go, um, you can go to other places from there. You can keep going down to Chiapas or go to, you know, uh, Yucatan or whatever. I, that's my route to Oaxaca and then Huatulco. If you're going to Huatulco, there's two routes after this. There's a roller coaster route that's six hours, and it's nothing but curbs and no cell signal in the mountains. And then there's another one that's only, only a third of it has curbs and the rest is pretty fairly straight. And that one is eight hours. A lot of people avoid it because they don't want to drive an extra two hours. I actually like it a lot. I didn't take it this time because this time of year, a lot of the villages like to close their highway. This is not a toll road, it's a state road. So they'll go and close it in protest to the state government over something. They won't hurt you or anything, but you'll be there all day and they don't open the road again till night. So like that happened to me once, I got there at noon, I was there, I was lucky I was only there three hours. They got to an agreement they were closing it to the semi trucks because they were protesting <coughs> something about the state hadn't given them money to repair their homes after an earthquake that they had been promised or that had been thrown out there like some politician threw it out there. So finally they came to an agreement and I was only there three hours. If not, I would have been there till 10 at night, which is when they reopened it. I would have been there from noon until 10 at night and still have to drive another two hours. So that's the only reason this time of year I don't do it. They always do it towards the vacation season because they, they know it'll hurt people more. So Easter, summer, and um, Christmas time is when they'll do it. Any other time of the year, you're pretty much in the clear. The other route is very, very windy. Windy, I'm sorry. That's 
U turn, U turn, U turn, U turn, U turn, U turn, U turn. Oh, top of the mountain now, go down. U turn, U turn, U turn. You do that three times. There's three mountains. You go up and down. U turn, U turn, U turn. And it's uh, about four hours of that and two hours of straights. So it's best to get a good night's sleep in Oaxaca before, even if you think you can go. I wouldn't do it after driving all day if you've been coming from Carreta or somewhere else. Now the other option is, if you're not a big driver, stop where I said uh, San Luis Potosi. You don't have to say it the czar or whatever. You can find your own. I just like them because they're literally like on the highway. Like highway exit, hotel, right there within half a mile. You don't have to go into town and waste time in traffic. But if you want to stop there the first day, that's, mm, what did I say? That's about 10 hours from the border, something like that with stops, nine hours, 10 with stops. Um, and then from there, you can just go to Puebla if you're not a big driver. And that'd be around seven or eight hours. And stay in Puebla the second day and get to see Puebla. And then the third day, just go to Oaxaca. That's five hours, get to see Oaxaca. And that way you're kind of resting unless you're in a very big hurry to get to Huatulco because that last part will wear you out. That last part from Oaxaca to Huatulco is rough. You have to be rested and you have to be patient. They're very small roads in the mountains. Sometimes there's fog, sometimes there's rain. Sometimes there's rain that makes part of the uh, hill slide, it's mud, like clay, and there's only one lane in certain curves, so you gotta be kind of slow and careful that no one else is coming. So it can be a hassle. Um, I would always recommend going the long route, the eight-hour route, which is through, uh, they call it the um, the Ismo. But like I said, they vacation time, they, they'll block some of the towns. Not always, but sometimes. That's it. Always remember, gas costs twice as much in Mexico as it does in the U.S. So you're paying about, it's a dollar a quart. So you're looking at about four bucks for a gallon. So keep that in mind if you're bringing a real big gas guzzler. Um, most of the gas stations in the northern part of the country will take any American car. Once you get closer down into Oaxaca, and sometimes they have issues with certain banks. I don't, I've had cars that they do work, some that don't. It just depends on the gas station owner because uh, they're trying to avoid paying commissions to the credit card companies by taking international cards. So they'll just block them out. So it's always good to have some cash on you for gas. Um, and remember that uh, you can contact the Green Angels while you're on this road at any time. What did we say it was, 085? 078. I'll tell you in just a moment. Let me Google it. 078, you got it. I was wrong. 078. These roads are very safe. The ones that I take, they're tow roads. The total tow to Oaxaca is about 75 bucks, which sounds like a lot. You've basically crossed the country with this. Tell them how you sterilize your money. Tell them how that like easy pass thing has been giving you problems. Well, I do. If I, I don't do the, I don't get, I have an easy pass, a Mexican easy pass now. It's called a passe. But when I first, when I was doing the cash and whenever, I mean, these toll booth workers aren't even wearing masks or anything. They're just grabbing money all day from people nonstop. So as soon as they would put the money in my hand, I would spray with alcohol and I have a compartment in my door. It just went there for the next toll. And I would just rub some more alcohol in my hands and keep driving. Um, now I have an easy pass. I bought it at an OXO, O-X-X-O. They're all over the highway. Make sure you get the one called Pase. We'll put a picture of it here. It's the only one that really works well and it has a good app that's available for uh, US phones because the other ones have apps but they're only available in the Latin American market so if your phone is registered outside of Latin America you can't even download the app for it you have to go to the website and it's it's horrible their websites are so hard to understand even if you can translate them they're a mess just but get the you said a certain amount of, of uh, balance you need to have if you go through, once you reach the center of Mexico, which is around Mexico City, there's this one road, this tow road called the North Arch. 
It goes all the way from Querétaro into Puebla. It circumvents all of Mexico City and the state of Mexico. It saves you hours in traffic. Um, they require you to have whatever your toll is, which is the maximum will be 450 pesos, which is like 24 bucks, plus an extra $75 balance. So you need at least 100 bucks on that thing to cross that area only. So you can always reload it you know, during your trip when you stop in Coretta or somewhere, find an OXO, reload it, and then later, um, make sure you have that extra balance there. What do you suggest about carrying extra gasoline with you? So, I do it, and I don't think you really need to. It's just the way I am. Um, first of all, you can't bring gas over the border. If you're gonna bring a canister, it has to be empty. That's one thing that's big no-no, not allowed to import for some reason. They do not like that. So you gotta bring an empty canister. If you bring a canister with gas in it already, um, Mexican Customs will not be happy. They'll have you pour it out or put it in the vehicle. And I bring one, just, but you know, as long as you keep loading up on gas, you'll be okay. There's. There's enough, they've built more gas stations now than the last time I did it years ago. And used to, you need to be really iffy with your gas now. They're everywhere, I mean. So we never traveled with less than half a tank. You can now? I would get to a quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once you reach Oaxaca, that's when I would start not using less than half. Because once you reach Oaxaca City, you're no longer on a federal highway. It's a state highway from there to Huatulco. There is gas stations, but not as many. But there is opportunities to fill up. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, you should be fine. Plus, if you fill up there, you easily reach Huatulco with one tank. It would probably be half a tank because it's only like... That's something crazy, like 130 miles. And it takes six hours to do that. That's how wind, how windy that road is. But uh, yeah, I mean, from the border to Oaxaca, there's gas stations everywhere. You really don't have to worry that much. And they'll each have a restaurant and a convenience store and restrooms. You usually have to pay for the restrooms. And unfortunately, they're not as clean as they used to be. I don't know what they, I don't know if that's a COVID thing. Like they don't have the workers going in as often and cleaning as often. Maybe they're just doing it at night. It used to be they were, spotless and now they're not so beware well thank you mark i really appreciate it i know when you and i traveled a lot before it was definitely different I'm well we took that other route that one that oh, i'm saying not to coast. take the gulf road yeah it was horrible when you and i started traveling that there were seven pangas that's how long it's been that's fairies yeah, yeah. so i'm glad you are helping people they do ask us quite a bit Thanks again. Yep, no problem. That's it. Be sure to subscribe to learn about life in Huatulco and to learn about retiring in Mexico also because we do share 25 years experience with you. Do you need a virtual mailbox so you can take care of business and personal communication on a daily basis? Are you interested in expat or nomad insurance that's highly affordable? Click our links below. We'll be back soon.